Hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play Croc 2! Welcome to the fourth world! The Inca Village! These guys are honestly probably the coolest out of all the gobos just because of the headgear they give on these guys. Like, it's really cool looking. Now, throughout this entire playthrough, I've been trying to get as much orange and hot colors as possible, but I've been trying to go by a set pattern in order to make the videos just like easier to digest really. Um, but as you can see with the last world, the pattern has kind of been slowly diminishing to the point where we get to this village. This village is easily the smallest one of the world, even though it has some great detail to it like just because of the walls alone, but also like statues like these. <laughs> but yeah, the pattern is going to end this video, because there is only two levels in this world. Not counting the Golden Gobo Door, which is, strangely, right over here. But yeah, there's only two. So we're pretty much going to be just going around this small little world, and then we're going to head on to the first level. There's nothing we can do on top of this temple right now because the door's closed, but that'll change very soon. And this is actually interesting. I think the biggest downside to this one world is that there's really cool set pieces, but you can't enjoy all of them like in one fell swoop because the draw distance for it is just terrible. Like we're missing the top half of the temple right here because it won't show up. Yeah, I don't get it. Especially down here because if you look at the ground, the dirt anyways, you can kind of see that it makes the outline of the bird from the Nazca lines. So that's just an interesting detail to go up, but I really wish I was able to see it from higher up. But I'm not allowed to do that. Now there is one other thing other than the two levels, and that's this guy. He seems to be enjoying himself. Well, at least it's kind of children-esque game, so it's not that he's drunk or anything, but this is our side quest. And it's less side quest and more quick time event. Button mashing. If you're able to get the bar above 80% by hitting X as fast as you can, then you're gonna win the side quest and get another 100 crystals. I think it's pretty much coming close to, well, the end of actually being able to use our crystals, so it's a good idea if you're kind of alright at the game, and you have a, a lot of crystals like I do, then you might want to stock us up, up on some heart pots if you really want to. Like, I could get four and still have 600 crystals to spare, which is more than enough. Hey, King, what's up? See, the headgear is arguably the best thing. He's also wearing a really cool thing. We have to watch out for frogs. It's also at this point in the game where the story is kind of put back into perspective. 
Because not only do we have to remember that the entire thing that we're doing in this game is trying to fight Croc's parents, but we're also trying to find the inventor, the professor, who was kidnapped and we haven't seen any of since we fought Ken and both Keith in the first world. But that'll change soon enough. But first off, we have this one level here. Hmm. Babies, you say? Well, it's good that we're actually saving more gobos, I guess. That's a good thing to do. As you... Are we gonna do -si do like this? A little bit. With the camera not really being helpful at all. But here we go. Time for the first of two levels in the Inca Village. Save 30 Gobo Babies. Kind of a different way of going about saving 50 Gobos like last time. There's blocks everywhere that you can kick in random directions. Which is kind of cool. But we're saving babies this time. Where could these babies possibly be? Well, they could be with these guys being chucked around. I think these are probably the most interesting Dantinis out of all of them. Technically, I think they're called Conquistador Dantinis because, well, it's the Incas. In terms of them being taken down, eh, well, it was the Spanish that came in. Just wrecked everything. These blocks don't have any sort of anything to them. You can just kick them around. Baby gobos can also hide in pots. So when you break a pot by either by usually just running into them, then they fly up into the air and you have a chance to catch them. You can also do this with the single dantinis if they're not getting tossed around. Once you get a baby gobo, you can just throw them back into a nearby playpen. I believe there's like four throughout the level. So depending on where you are, that's where you're going to be putting them. That is a face. Now I will have to say that this level is surprisingly big. And it's only one level. Or, I shouldn't say one level, it's, it's only one area. These little inside areas that I'm going through, well, they don't... there's not a lot of them. I think there's only two, actually. Both are really important to go into if you're wanting everything, but otherwise you're gonna be just going around the outside area like this. There's no sections. It's just one big area. And for first-time players, it's going to be rather daunting. D Baby. Thank you. I'm not sure about this cash register, if there's any significance to the 214 on the thing, or if it's just something they decided to put on there. I haven't found anything about it, but oh well. Now, an important thing about the babies. There are 30 to save, and as we've been collecting babies and putting them into playpens, they've been giving us crystals. A total of two. So apparently, baby gobos have a net worth of two crystals, whereas regular gobos have only one. They're cute, they're worth more. But the thing about these baby gobos is that you have to heed the person's warning before you enter the level. And that's not making them cry. It's actually important. Because if you have them cry at any point, this is either by throwing them or getting hit while carrying them by one of these conquistadors, you're going to make them cry, and if they cry, you do not get any crystals out of them. So if you're going for 100 crystals, like I am, uh, it's going to be a little bit of a challenge. You never expected to play a game like this and have a no-cry run. There's also keys all around the level. We already saw one Gobo, baby Gobo, in a cage, but there's a couple more. For instance, there's that one back there, but there's also one all the way over down here, hidden away in the corner. I'm gonna pick up this little girly girl right here. 
because one thing is really cool about the Baby Gobos is that there's a lot of small little design touches on each of them to make them just distinct and different, which is a good idea. Now, you can either go one or two ways. I'm gonna go back towards this musketeer, I suppose. We'll get a closer look at those musketeers because they're actually the most dangerous of the long-range enemies that we're going to be seeing in the game. But a little more on that later. We have nine, but there's not nine in that pen anymore. There's only so many that can actually fit in that pen. And they have some reach on them, wow. They're really good at catch. Don't na 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 at me. Sometimes it's good to take care of the two before picking up the baby gobo because sometimes things can go horribly wrong. E jumping also kind of makes a weird effect go on. <laughs> it, 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 you're not holding on at all, Croc. Just carrying it with the best that you can in terms of limitations. And that's pretty much the gist of this level, is that we're going to be going around collecting the next 20 babies and putting them in more pens. There's just a little cool design areas, like these little stands all around the place. Jars, and then one other area that we have to go into. But otherwise, that's the level. The main challenge is just pretty much getting all of the baby gobos into the play pens. Which is a little bit more difficult than I'd like to have, because throwing them, they don't go very far. So, um, hugging the wall, one of the walls of the playpen, is pretty much your safest bet about getting into it. None of this, like, angle shots like that, because it can go wrong. I had one baby gobo one time actually bounce along the edge of the playpen and outside of it, and then, of course, it started crying. It ruined my run. Once you get the gist of this level, it actually goes by a lot quicker, because, hell, oh, we're already up halfway. And I will kick over any blocks I see. The music for the Inca levels, even though there's only two of them, is also kind of enjoyable, I find. It's just the guitar to the already remixed music. It's just got that pep to it. Now, on top of the 60 crystals... Ah, come on, get up, get up the ladder, please. On top of the 60 crystals that we get from the baby gobbles alone, there are also 40 just kind of strewn about. And that is some bed. Wow. Of course, some of those crystals are going to be in the crystal... Not the crystal gobo, go clockwork gobo section. This one is a little bit challenging because you need to be able to use the corners to the best of your ability. Getting all of the things along the track, the crystals, the heart, and also the colored crystal at the very end is kind of difficult. If you're not prepared for the track, because you do not have a lot of juice to spare, you might be more confident about actually bringing in a second Clockwork Gobo into that track, just to make getting the colored crystal a lot easier. Hey guys, how's it going? You're a bit twitchy. That's okay. Okay, more running around. I'm gonna pick you up. I think another annoyance is, like, I keep, I keep going back to, like, first time going through, hey! Surprise attack! I keep going back to first time experiences with this because, well, if you're not exploring the level, 
then you're eventually going to like go backtrack way more than you need to in order to find like a playpen that you know is there instead of blindly going, okay, where is the nearest playpen? It's a little bit annoying. And this area is pretty much one big empty area, except the wow, that's whoa. <laughs> Oh, the camera. Oh, boy. Except that pretty much the entire expanse of this and all the enemies are up on these, well, floating upper rafters, including the baby gobos for this area. The only real annoying part is that that's pretty much the only way you're able to get up here. And then you have to drop down, throw them into the pen, and then repeat the process. So while this is going on, time for some more interesting facts. We're getting into the promotional stuff now for me, so what I've been able to dig up is, well, some... possibly some E3, actually, coverage that Croc 2 had. Not sure if it was E3, but it was definitely at a big convention, or an, an exhibition. Take a look at these pictures. Like, they look pretty incredible. Like, the giant inflatable Croc 2, like, it had a gigantic display. And I think it's 1998. Because this did come out, like, when the summer began of 1999. So if it was E3, it probably wouldn't have been the case. But yeah, you got the giant inflatable Croc statue. That is incredible. And, and also the, um... The display with Croc and water, which looks really cool. It's not actually water, but it kind of looks like it. On top of that, there was also, I think it was at that E3, that, um, or at least something else, that Fox Interactive USA, they gave away a life-size plushy Croc toy, which to me is kind of really cool. It's a one-of-a-kind toy, like, I would never be able to find it myself. But if you... I think I said this, like, in my... in Croc Legend of the Gobos, that Croc's official height is four feet. So imagine to yourself getting a four-foot crocodile with a backpack. Like, that's pretty awesome. But it is one-of-a-kind. In terms of other Croc plush toys, I was actually... Um, looking around for anything, like, merchandise-wise. And I came across... What the heck is going on with these blocks? Oh my god. <laughs> Ack! Ack! Uh, this is what happens when six blocks decide to mash into five. Wow. <laughs> but anyway. What I was able to find was actually a picture of this. It's not the same as the four... And there's a key up there. I'm gonna go grab that. There's a total of three keys in this level. So, there we go. We got two. And while I'm thinking of it, I might as well get that locked... That caged baby gobo and actually put it in a pen before I continue any further. But anyway, this really cool plush toy I found pictures of. Apparently, from what I was able to find information-wise, it's around a foot tall and was given to the development staff. Each of the development staff got a plush toy. It even looks really cool itself. No way you're able to gonna find one yourself if you're a really big croc fan, but it's really cool that something like this exists because, well, certainly with croc, the only thing you could really get in terms of merchandise was, well, I don't know, postcards? And even those you can't get anymore. Sometimes with this little baby gobo all the way up on the bridge, every now and again you can, it will just kind of make a peep, make a noise, and you'll go, where is that coming from? And that's where it comes from. There's another locked, caged baby gobo, but now we have five colored crystals. So, slide down, and there's our entryway. And with the music going down, let's just sit in silence and look at this wonderful challenge that is this Golden Gobo section. Big open area, nothing, no enemies, no obstacles. It's locked in a cage. Hmm. 
All right, we have a switch over here. Let's hit it. Absolutely freaking brilliant. What? I don't even understand why that is even a challenge. Did they? I think they're running out of ideas. Seeing as it is the second last Golden Gobo we're going to be getting in the game, and it is, eh, I wouldn't doubt that. Yeah, whatever. It's an easy one. I shouldn't be complaining, but I will. And now we can get actually looking at this scenery. Like, Croc still pulls out the evil villains doing really cutesy things. Like swing sets. Come on, guys. It's time to get off the swing set. Back in the pen. Your fun time is going to be done. Let's play with your friends a little bit more. Alright, 26. We have one last area to check out because we've come full loop. And look at even this. Look at it. It's amazing. It's adorable. Just pushing it. Oh my god. The gobos can hurt you. I didn't even know that. Pushing them around so fast. But again, it's time for all of you to get back in the pen. Now, I should mention this before I forget because, well, the easiness of that golden gobo kind of threw me off. Because of a level like this, because you can do it in so many different ways, I actually figured out that um, Golden Gobos, depending on when you get your last crystal and where, the Golden Gobo section can spawn in different locations. They pretty much just spawn near you when you get the last colored crystal in an area. So it doesn't ha matter where you get it, because it's not in a, in a specific area. You get... Kid, you want to be picked up or not? Good boy. All right, time to meet all your friends. Hopefully your parents or siblings or babysitters will be around shortly. Who am I? Well, I, I, I guess I'm your savior, but, well, consider me like your misplaced, twice removed uncle, I guess. Don't worry, your actual family will be around shortly. But with that, we have collected all 30 baby gobos, and we have all 100 crystals. Perfect no cry run. Don't worry with you two. Where is Billy and Bobby and Johnny? I'll go look for them. We saved them, and not a single one cried that day. You still seem disappointed in me, though. Why would that be? The baby has nothing to say, though. And with that, we can move on to the next level. Well, where's the rest of your tribe? Because technically I'm only seeing one, two, one over there, three, four, baby, and five. Where's the rest of them? But don't worry, they're okay. They can't really jump. That's what I do. That's all I do. But yeah, that one being a relatively long level because of its size and its relative challenge to it, we're going to be saving the next level for next time. And after that, who knows what happens next? Is he still an odd guy? I'm pretty sure, but we need to stock up one more time for this last level. See you next time, everyone!